Hi folks, Will at LR Workshop. And in this video, I'm gonna be uh, looking at the three pretty much standard Land Rover rims that were offered, telling you what I know about them, telling you what I think about them, and then we're gonna weigh them. Ooh, weighing wheels, isn't that fun? So over here, we've got the Land Rover Heavy Duty rim, also known as the Wolf Wheel. These are, so it's worth saying, these are all 16 inch wheels. This one is 6.5 inches wide. This is the standard Land Rover rim, 5.5 inches wide. And then this is the Boost Alloy, which is seven inches wide. There are other types of alloy wheel fitted to Defenders, but they were kind of special editions like the sawtooth alloys, that kind of stuff. So these are basically standard fitment on all Defenders and they came in tubed or tubeless varieties. The Wolf wheels, basically it got the name because it's fitted to the Wolf military defenders, but essentially it was fitted to 110 heavy duty versions and 130s. These are rated to 2,200 uh, kilograms each, because if you imagine the vehicle's off road, it's articulating on the back axle, um, you'll get one wheel in the air, you need all of the rear axle weight to go through one wheel on a 110 that I think that's uh, 1,800 or something kilograms. So these are weight rated within that. Uh, the Wolf came in tubeless and tubeless, tubed and tubeless varieties also. So let's take a closer look. Starting with the Land Rover standard rim. This is uh, quite thinner than the Wolf as we'll see in a minute. And these are some of the markings you get. This is a tubeless variety. on here they do tend to rust a fair amount the wolf rim is a lot thicker Let's see if you can see it on there the metal is a lot thicker um, these are some of the markings on the wheel and these also rust naturally because they're steel the difference between the tubed and the tubeless is the 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 the, the ridge here you see a ridge just in there that's the ridge for the, um, the bead of the tubeless tire. So you can tell these are tubeless because of the ridge on them. The boost alloys are alloys, so they won't corrode, not le nearly half as much, but they do tend to corrode around here. As you can see, there's a bit of corrosion happening on these, but they're very good condition otherwise. And uh, the main difference is they're not self-centering wheel nuts. So they're a bit tricky to put on. These are conical, so they're Kind of cool, so they're self-centering as it were, but the boosts aren't. It makes it a bit trickier to put the wheel on, but they look great. So this boost wheel has got a Continental Cross Contact, uh, all-terrain tyre, 23585R16. Uh, the steel wheel's got an Avon Rangemaster 7.5 by 16. And the wolf wheel's got a BF Goodrich all-terrain, the first generation 23585 R16. So the weight comparison of these three won't be completely scientific because the tires weigh differently, but I would imagine that the, the wheel is the heaviest component of the setup. But I'd be interested to know actually, because I know heavy, the wolf wheels are incredibly heavy. Thirty two point one. Thirty six point nine. So that's really interesting, actually. Um, these two are basically the same weight, give or take. I can't say accurately because the tires will be different weights. These are a bit wider, a bit heavier. But the Wolf Wheel is probably about five kilos heavier. So the, I think a direct comparison can be made between this Wolf and this Boost because the tyres are probably similar. Um, uh, well, they are the same size and they're probably similar construction. Uh, this is about five kilos heavier. This is just an insert to the video because I'm actually later on. I've got a Wolf Wheel by itself and I've also got a standard steel wheel by itself. So I'm going to weigh them individually and that might give a bit more of an accurate comparison. Yep, 
11 kilos. Fifteen point three kilos. So between the bare rims, there's only four point three kilos difference. And comparing the rims when they've got tyres on them, there was only, it was only four point eight kilos. So the difference between the Avon Rangemaster and the BF Goodrich All Terrain is only about half a kilo. So it shows that the rim is more of the weight component than the tyre. So I think it's quite valid to compare all three wheels and tyres as we've measured them. So that's quite a bit more. Well, not a bit more but you feel it, you really feel it. And actually these things are really damn heavy. And it's the reason why I've only got four of these on the vehicle. The spare on the bonnet is a steel wheel. Because these are actually incredibly tricky to manhandle compared to these ones. Um, so I think if you're gonna run, if you're gonna run wolves, and to be honest, the wolves are probably a bit overkill, but they do look great. They're probably a bit overkill on any kind of, or even an expedition vehicle. I mean, you could get away with using steel wheels. Um, they, they're probably a bit too heavy for a spare, just because you've got the weight hanging on the back door and or on the bonnet and or on the roof rack. And uh, manhandling a spare is pretty tricky. However, naturally, if you put the spare on, this was gonna go back in the place of where the spare is. So you are gonna be manhandling this thing back to where the spare wheel, spare wheel goes. I think on looks, I like the Wolf, um, but on an overland expedition, I'd probably be happy with the steel wheels. I ran these in Belize and we had no problems with steel wheels. You can get a bit wider tire on the Wolfs because they're a bit wider and on the boosts. This does allow the fitment of the widest tire of all these rims and they look better actually. They're not gonna, they don't look as scabby as these ones do. In terms of their widths, now this is not a comparison of the wheels necessarily, this is more the tyres, but you can see the difference in width of tyre. So here we've got the Boost, the Steel and the Wolf. You can see the difference in width and tyre that the wheels allow you to fit and how they, I guess on a seven inch rim, the side walls bulge a bit more than on a six and a half inch rim. I'm not gonna talk about offsets because that gets a bit complicated. The Wolf and the Boost have got quite a different offset. But suffice to say, if you fit any of these three wheels with standard tyres, then you're not going to have any clearance issues on, on the body. In terms of looks, this is what wolf wheels look like on a Defender. Pretty damn cool, I reckon. Although they are getting very scabby and rusty. and These ones are about eight years old. They were brand new when I put them on, and they're now eight years old. And this is actually the good side. And this is what boost alloy wheels look like. Very smart. In terms of fitting the wheels to the vehicle, the steel wheel is actually a lot easier. Um, it's so much lighter. It's where you feel it with the wolf wheel. The wolf wheel is a bit of a bugger to put on, actually. And then the boost alloys are also a bit tricky because they don't centralise on the wheel nuts. So you've got to put it up, lift it up over the drive member and then lift it while you put the nuts in to put them on. So actually, if you're thinking of ease of changing wheels, if you're on an overland journey, I would go with the steel wheels. So what should you choose? Uh, Ultimately, whatever you want, they're your wheels, I don't care. The steel wheels are very versatile and they're very easy to change. If you want aesthetics, then I'll go for the Boost because they wouldn't uh, corrode as much and they look a lot better. And if you want uh, that kind of like military look, the Wolf Wheel is the one for you. And if you want to fit wider tyres than standard, then either of these two should be good enough. And the benefit with these, any of these three wheels is that you can fit um, standard size wheels and you're not going to have any body clearance issues or caliper clearance issues, that kind of stuff. These will just work. I guess it remains to be said that people say that steel wheels bend and alloy wheels shatter. So if you're going over land, then you can always hammer these back. Uh, I've got a few images on the screen here of bent steel wheels. And to be honest, it's just a kind of a get you out of trouble fix. Probably getting a steel wheel airtight again is not going to be very easy. 
so the wheel is screwed no matter what and to be honest you should probably be carrying two spare wheels anyway so i don't think the, the in botswana we had a rented defender that had boost alloys on it and it works you know they can take a bit of abuse. I mean, that's a rent vi rented vehicle so they take a lot of abuse they can take the abuse i wouldn't worry so much about that um i think that debate is a bit bit of a moot point to be honest but other than that that is a summary of these three land river defender wheels leave a comment below about which one you think is the best subscribe if you're interested in Land Rover content, because I'll probably post another video you'll be interested in in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.